bent double like old beggars under sacks, knock kneed, coughing like hags, we curse through the sludge, till on the haunting flares we turn our backs, and towards our distant rest begin to trudge. Men march to sleep, many have lost their boots, but limped on, bloodshod, all went lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the hoots of gas shells dropping softly behind. Gasp! Gas! Quick, boys! An ecstasy of fumbling, fitting in the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone still was yelling out and stumbling, and floundering like a man in fire or lime. Dim through the misty panes and thick green light, as under a green sea I saw him drowning. In all my dreams before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. If in some smothering dreams you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in, and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face, like a devil sick of sin. If you could hear, at every jolt, the blood come gargling from the froth crept of the lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as the cud, of vile and curable sources on innocent tongues, my friend, you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory. The old lie, dulce et decorum, es pro parti mori. Hello. All right, so the poem we are reading and analyzing today is Dulce et Decorum Est, and we'll explain the meaning of that in a little bit by Wilfred Owen. And a little background on the author. He actually was a war poet during World War I, and this is one of the poems he wrote during his service. And he actually died in service the week before the armistice was announced. So here is Dulce et Decorum Est. But double, like old beggars under sacks, simile, knock need, coughing like hags, we cursed through sludge, we can tell they're through some kind of dark wartime from these two minds, till on the haunting flares we turned our backs, and towards our distance rest we began to march. Uh, we kind of took this as possibly a march to their death, or a march to more suffering. Men marched to sleep, many had lost their boots, but limped on, bloodshod, all went lame, all blind. So from these two lines, we can tell that everyone in this war is in horrible condition. They don't have shoes, they're limping, they're all lame. And we can tell that they're exhausted and from the line we marched to sleep. And they're all blind, so they're kind of like not really aware of what's going on right now because they're so exhausted and shell-shocked from war. Drunk with fatigue, deaf even, on the, even to the hoots of gas shells dropping softly behind. And we can tell there's gonna be a change in the poem so they're not just walking now or marching now. Something that about, is about to happen. Gas, gas, quick boys. An ecstasy of fumbling, we took that as chaos. Fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. Those are actually gas masks. But someone still was yelling out and stumbling and floundering like a man in fire or lime. Um, it's a simile of like, he's basically suffering like he's in hell. And from this, we can tell that somebody didn't get their gas mask on in time before the gas exploded. Dim through the misty panes and thick green light, as under a green sea, I saw him drowning. Um, this kind of shows that he's suffering and there's extreme and muddled chaos from the dimness and the green sea. We can show that it's like very chaotic and confusing and hard to see. In all my dreams before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. So it's talking about the person who doesn't have their gas mask on suffering, and the um, speaker is horrified by this from the In My Dreams line. And now there's a shift. So instead of just talking about what's happening, the author is addressing the readers of the poem. If in some smothering dreams you, once again addressing the reader, two could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in. It's basically talking about the um, hospital stretcher they're probably carrying him in. And watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face like a devil's sick of sin and we can tell that he's in a somewhat hellish condition and he's really suffering if you could hear at every jolt the blood come gargling from the froth corrupted lungs obscene as cancer bitter as the cud you can show that this person is definitely suffering something horrible and tragic and this is supposed to bring up feelings of sympathy and pain within the reader a viable incurable sores on innocent tongues this kind of expresses that the people in this war are definitely innocent and don't deserve this like the soldiers who are fighting my friend, once again addressing the reader, you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory. Um, the old lie, dulce et decorum est pro, pro patria mori. 
And basically it's what it's saying is you wouldn't tell um, your children about glory of, of this line. And this line is actually from the Roman Empire. Uh, dulce et decorum est pro, pro patria mori means it is sweet and proper to die for one's country. And basically what the author is trying to say that you wouldn't be saying this, that it's honorable to die for your country based on these horrible conditions that these soldiers are experiencing, like the one who's suffering from the gasp chamber, or the gas bombs. All right, time for Soapstone. So the speaker, it's a first person narrative. We don't know if this is specifically the author or not, but it's from a soldier's perspective. Um, the occasion is the World War I battlefield lines. We can assume this is probably in Europe from the words it uses like sea and mist was used in here somewhere. It was probably in Europe and not somewhere along like the dry deserty areas. All right, and then audience. This poem is most likely targeted to soldiers, anyone affected by World War I, anyone interested in World War I. So it could be people in the present time that this was written or historians or even high school students. And the purpose of this was to show war through a soldier's eyes and to argue that dying for one's country isn't honorable and that World War I is just terrible and shouldn't be supported because of all the horrible things going on, such as all the gas explosions. And the subject, we can assume that it is a soldier at war witnessing horrible things such as like gas explosions and it's terrible conditions as seen from like nobody having boots and people limping and everything. And the tone of this overall was grim, fearful, and disgusting. So you can tell that the author or the um, speaker is definitely disgusted with what's happening and is horrified. It even talks about like having nightmares of the person who was choking coming after him. And yes, so this is the poem Dulce et Decorum Est by Wilfred Owen.